So I'm not really too worried about that. In fact, if I could lower how much money we were getting, I would do so. I think once we begin colonizing, that won't be such a big problem because colonies are notoriously expensive to actually maintain and fund. Uh, I think we might as well just go the whole way and fill out all of this, seeing as we have the points to do so. And the technology is actually ahead on diplomatic stuff, I do believe. Or at least it's ahead to the point where it won't make that much of a big difference. Let's do Malta as well, seeing as we're here. Malta. 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 Be nice and accept the marketplace. <laughs> Telling it off like it's a bad child. Going, no, I don't want your gift. You will accept it and you will be happy. Rhodes, you will accept it. Thank you. And Cyprus... I think we'll call it there for now. <laughs> We've upgraded a lot of places, so we don't need to worry too much about doing that for now. Uh, let's see how long until we can actually get this done. So we need 1139 power if we want to increase it, so we won't get that done for a while. I might build a few uh, admin buildings as well. I'm tempted to take ecumenism now and just not worry about the Counter-Reformation, but I really like the Counter-Reformation. We can end up with six missionaries if we play our cards right. It's at 66.8%. It can shoot up really, really fast, but... Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm tempted to cancel this mission as well. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to cancel that mission because there's not really much point to converting that particular cultural background. I don't really care when it comes down to it. Okay, so let's have a look at admin buildings and what we can get in the way of stuff and things that we need. I know. Oh, dear. Infantry cost and cavalry cost goes up, but that's okay. Now, uh, we could probably go with courthouses across France, which I think would probably be a good idea, considering that France is basically our heartland. So let's upgrade all the courthouses along here. Damn it. An upgrade, not take away. Damn game. Now let's fill in all of these. And we'll fill things across this way too. Let's just build as many as we can possibly put in with the points that we currently have. So Luxembourg, you get one too. We can no longer claim that Podolia is part of our province. That's alright. Upgrade you as well. And... To freeze. Enter the administration, please, and then we'll do London. There we go. Glorious. So our building program is going quite well. I'm hoping that continuing to do this, because I'm not exactly sure how the converter for Victoria 2 from EU4 works. It's a lot of technical stuff that I've just never really bothered to learn. But I understand that it converts based off on population, so you get a lot of really good stuff there, because if you converted the game just by copying and pasting what you should own into Victoria 2, you end up with a population that boggles the mind. Like, you're already going to have a big population converting an empire of this size, but it, it's even more ridiculous than you'd think. Uh, improve province? Sure. Let's do that. We can do that for an easy five military tradition at some point. Well, army tradition, military tradition is kind of split into two different formats, navy and army, for this particular game. But uh, with a Victoria 2 conversion, the converter, I believe, also takes into account what buildings you have around in regards to uh, how educated you will be as a people, because in Victoria 2 it uses literacy. Oh, we've completed two more provinces. This pleases me greatly. And you are almost done. Lovely. Just lovely. Let's go with those. So, if you have... Ooh, Leipzig University. Um, I will take the Prestige this time around, actually. Because Prestige is falling, unfortunately. Is it falling very much? It's falling by two a year. That's not fantastic. And... Ali has taken some decisions. There's a new Sultan. How are they doing, I wonder? It's almost worth having a conquistador just so we can go wander around down there. That would be really cool. But uh, if you're converting into 
Victoria 2. I'm hoping that improving the economy and all the other stuff around here will increase some things, like uh, if we have shipyards, grand shipyards, perhaps we'll have naval bases in some places. Because you don't, as far as I recall, start with any. Oh, really? Monetary reforms. Our treasurers are arguing that we need to enact some reforms in our economic policy, a new master of the mint will also be needed to take care of the economy. I'm going to say no and go with the inflation. I think that'll lower how much money we actually make, and I can I can be happy with that. To be quite honest, we don't need a ton of money. Norway, Norway, Norway. We've guaranteed their independence, so Gotland won't be trying to kill them anytime soon. I don't think, and we are allied with them. I'm curious if they will attack Gotland. They could probably do it all on their... They could probably do it all on their own if they really tried. More coffee imports. Once again, do these so-called economists have to deal with early mornings? I think not. Coffee imports are the way to go. Reconciling differences. Oh good, we made friends with Poland again. Sometimes when countries have different types of government, they just do not understand each other fully. With our competent diplomats, we have reconciled our differences with one of our neighbours. Good news, everyone. So that will be because of our diplomatic ideas, obviously. Humanist ideas are really, really good. I still find it funny that by taking humanist ideas when nobody else does it, even if your nation happens to be a complete autocracy, like ours is, people will still go, ooh, aren't they liberal? <laughs> a new rivalry. Norway has announced Scotland as their rival. Jolly good. And Russia's name moved a bit, so that suggests to me that perhaps they are using colonists? They still have window on the west. Do they have the colonial idea? Muscovite ideas, yes they do. They have the Siberian frontier, so they are able to begin colonizing this way already, which is good because I'm hoping that when we get to Victoria 2, perhaps Russia will be our massive enemy. And if the Timurids stay put together for a while and perhaps go further into India, that would be really, really interesting. I'm also hoping that China will perhaps unite and Japan for sure. Japan might actually already exist for all I know, because Japan tends to unite fairly quickly and then fall apart. So there might be a Japan of just one or two provinces, but we'll have to go and explore that way to find out. So what I am going to do, I'm not going to ask, because I have asked a couple of times what idea group I should take, suggestions for idea groups, but for the next one I'm not going to ask. The next one is going to be... Uh, Expansion ideas. No. Exploration ideas, that's right. Exploration ideas, because you need the quest for the new world. And then we'll probably take expansion. We'll take expansion at some point. But I'm not sure what else we'll take. Those are the two that I want, but then that still leaves us with three more choices. Those ones might be up to you, Senate. Statesman Nicholas... No, Statesman August Nicholas. Augustus Nicholas has died. Why was that so hard? <laughs> And to replace him, we will get Statesman Tiberius Jovian, because Spymaster and Traders aren't that great, and he's a three. And I totally need that. Alright, let's get on with things. Poland, I'm never going to ally with you. You're too... You, you're just not a thing for me. I don't, I don't like you enough. Ooh. Did we lose? No, we didn't lose our royal marriage. I thought maybe we might have. That's unfortunate, he has an heir. I'm hoping that we can perhaps sit our, sit our uh, dynasty on the throne of Polotsk, but we won't get a, uh, a personal union with them, I'm hoping. After you get one personal union, it's usually difficult unless you happen to be Austria to get more, so. I'm hoping that if we do manage to sit our, our particular, oh, Poland is no longer a rival for Gotland, that's interesting. Um, I'm hoping that if we manage to sit our particular dynasty on the throne of Polotsk, we won't have to worry too much about them. Um, diplomatic tech? Really? That was awfully quick. Oh, we've got a couple of bonuses for that though, don't we? The diplomatic core, we've got some ideas that reduce that. Yeah, yeah, actually that's, that makes perfect sense. Alright, let's go with the Grand Shipyard and Road. And how long would we need to get this? 809 power, 
and 869 power. Okay, we're going to gun for level 13 in both of these and hope that Russia hasn't actually got up to that point yet. So, Diplomatic Technology is Advanced, Grand Shipyard and Road. I, st I still think that that should be Roads, Grand Shipyard and Roads, or Grand Shipyards and Roads, but whatever. Roads will allow products to better flow to coastal markets where ships built in our Grand Shipyards will pick up these goods and deliver them to our customers in other countries. Good news. Land Technology Research is useless. They have a point or ignore them, and what does it say here? Several prominent men in our country are pointing out that the path we are going when it comes to army research is utterly foolish and will amount to nothing. They demand that we stop our current approach and stick with what was good enough for our fathers. This is kind of an argument that happened a lot in the Italian states. I'm going to say ignore them, even though it's a suffering to our prestige. I'm hoping that we'll get that event where it's a, a university class has graduated, because we have a ton of universities. Um, this is kind of a thing that happened a lot, mainly in Italy, where the conditore of the old school, who felt that guns were kind of for pansies, and guns were not for real men. Real men charged the people with swords, and they sliced limbs off, and you know, they didn't use these guns. They used the old-fashioned crossbow, and bows, and spears, and swords. And we've converted another province. Hooray! Is that the one that was taking a really long time? It is. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, damn it. All our nice things wore off. That's unfortunate. So how long is this? Where's our last one? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's almost done. Yeah, okay. Oh, really? It will never be fully converted. Damn it. Well, maybe we'll get another Cardinal Minister. I hope so. What was I saying? That's right, um, the use of guns was kind of shunned by some of the Conditore, usually those from the north, interestingly enough, like Milan and Mantua, that sort of thing. But others did sort of go, well, guns are fairly useful, guns can take down walls. They're kind of a big deal, they're kind of helpful, and in the end of the new school obviously won out, because guns became kind of widespread leading to the Napoleonic Wars and the War of the Spanish Succession and all those other wars where basically it was people lining up in massive long lines of infantry with guns going blam 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 and you know shouting reload and fire and all those things that made the Sharp series fantastic. So we will go with the new school because we are a progressive empire. We may be an autocracy but at this time everyone's an autocracy unless they're Poland in which case they're elective because Fuck logic. I still don't want ecumenism. No, stop it. I do really, really want that uh, that culture acceptance to go down, though. So I'm I'm really tempted to go for it. I mean, we do have a couple of ideas left to grab, like imperial bureaucracy, which actually will help with accepted culture threshold, and imperium sign fine, scene fine. I don't know. The empire without end. That thing. So we do still have two more to go, and we need, I believe, five more ideas. So that's four right there. I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. But I kind of don't want to grab it. Because I'm holding out for the Counter-Reformation. I keep thinking that it's going to happen fairly soon. But if we go and have a look at our actual religion thing, it's only up to 69.3%. So it still has 30% to go before it hits 100, and that kind of triggers a, uh, a even meantime to happen on the event for the Reformation to start popping up. There's actually two different things, there's the Reformed and then there's the Protestant uh, particular religions, and they are slightly different, which I'll show you when we actually get to being able to pick them. Improvement in naval technologies. There are claims that local fishermen have improved... English. There are claims that local fishermen have improved ship design. If we do a careful study of their ships and try building a copy, our best admirals believe that our naval technology will benefit a lot in the future. We can spare no expense, or we can use some caution. How's inflation in the Empire? Inflation is up to 7.75%. Damn. Spare no expenses. We can always reduce it if we wish to, but I'm not really too fussed about it. It's increasing slightly. When it gets to a really, 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 really high number, and I know, 
When you think about it, 8.25 is really, really, really high. But for an empire that's as large as ours, still making 80, 80 ducats, even though we've got this, I'm not too worried. So I'll deal with it later. <laughs> Said every great politician ever, don't worry about it, I'll deal with it later. It'll be fine. And then the economy collapses. I'm interested that, again, again with the Eugenius the Fourth. I'm interested that Jamia has stayed independent. They haven't even become a protectorate with anybody. That's very interesting. In the test games that I've run where I played it in observer mode, Russia usually went to get Jamia as soon as they possibly could because Archangel, I believe... Is the port that's up here? Yes. Archangelisk. I'm probably saying that completely wrong as well. <laughs> you guys are used to it by now. Saying things right is just not something that I do unless they happen to be English. In which case, it's a 50-50 shot that I might get it right. And another Pope has just happened. That's really interesting. I'm wondering if the name keeps repeating because we've just not got a papal state, so there's no names to switch through. That is quite possible. It's probably the exact answer. Can I actually... If I can release the Papal States as a vassal, I may do it. Maybe. In my country, create subjects. Tyrolic Order, Morocco, Augsburg, Frankfurt. There's a lot of nations here, but none of them are... The Papal States. Do I even have an option to do that anymore? No. Hmm. That's intriguing. We fight the past, it fights back. Dedication to a more liberal understanding of the place of citizen in the state means that our neighbors have branded us a rogue nation. See? There, told you. It's amusing. Even though as an autocracy, we're apparently too liberal for everybody. Uh, that our neighbours have branded us a rogue nation committed to undermining the traditional rights of crown, church, and guild. Can we only trust those that think as we do? Forward, even if alone. So Denmark, pretty much everybody around us is going to get a little bit pissy at us, but I'm okay with that. They can be as pissy as they like. And we can invest in new technology, apparently. Oh, military tech. Excellent. Go for that. So now we have... Small cast iron cannon or large cast iron cannon? I think we're probably going to go with small, if I remember correctly which one's good. Yeah, small is pretty much the better one for us. Now, Russia, how are you doing? You're at level 12 for military and level 12 for diplomatic. But you're only at level 10 for administrative, so we might have the edge that we need. So that's one, two... Three, four, five. I think you need five technology points to be ahead before you can convince them to westernize, I think. Maybe. I'm probably wrong about that. It's probably seven. But we might be in... English again. We might be ahead enough. Talking is apparently really, really difficult. We might be ahead enough that we'll be able to... Uh, just stay ahead of them long enough to get that. So, ooh, 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 what the, what, what, what? Oh, oh good, that's actually a good thing. So, lots of messages, black news. My Imperator, our people are losing confidence in your government, leading to a stability drop. Some superstitious fools even suggest that our country is losing divine favor. So, all of those things will go down, that's okay. Anastasia de Harcor, First of her name will rule our glorious nation, with a four in admin, three in diplomacy, and two in military. She is far better than Hadrian ever was. Anastasia's attention to detail and superior administrative... Oh, Nathaniel, I meant. Hadrian, I don't know where I pulled that from. I think there was a Hadrian at some point. I'm probably incorrect again. We've probably never had a Hadrian ever, and I'm just thinking of the actual Hadrian back in the day who built the massive wall. Uh, Anastasia's attention to detail and superior administrative, administrative skill will aid us in reforming our administration and, ma and maximizing our taxes. Our nation is in mourning over the loss of our previous monarch, Nathaniel, the first of his name, who was not actually first of his name. An heir to... oh. <laughs> it's 
probably because I read the heir to the throne thing. The heir to the throne is named Hadrian. He is the new heir, and the succession is safe. But how old is he? Oh, that's actually really good. She's 44. He's age 10, so he should come to the throne in his mid-20s to 30s. Not bad, not bad. And our administrative tech has advanced. We now have... Improved drainage. The more land we can cultivate, the bigger the population we can feed in that area. Gradual improvements in drainage have led to wetlands being brought into use. We'll be getting events for that as well, I do believe. Uh, we'll be getting a few events in which the, uh, the option will be, would you like to improve farmland? In which case, we would probably say yes, and I believe there's also a thing. Oh yeah, royal marriages. I forgot. Yes, royal marriage with them. Uh, royal marriage with you as well, if you'll have us. They will probably not accept. They do not like us enough. Fair enough. Uh, we can royal marriage. Yeah, I didn't think so. We don't need to royal marriage the Norwegians. We're all good there. They'll probably not accept. Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of pissed off at us. I'm pretty sure they don't like our, uh, our aggressive expansion. But we'll be okay. There should be a stable government. Several of the leading members of government are deeply worried about some changes proposed to how the realm should be ruled. They demand a stop to such outrageous reforms based on our tried and proved traditions, naturally avoiding mentioning how the changes would impact their own power base. This happened a lot too. Surprise, surprise. So let's see, what are the options? Accept the demands where we lose some admin power or ignore them and lose some prestige. Well, I don't really want to dip much more below the prestige that we're currently at, so I'm going to accept their demands and we're going to kind of curb the reform just a little bit. It won't really make that much of a difference in the practical sense because we don't actually go through making reforms. In Victoria 2, you do actually go through making political reforms. You have changed government. You are a despotic monarchy. They've reformed the government. Ah, that means they might come along to begin westernizing, actually, fairly soon. They've surprisingly got really, really high diplomatic tech. I'm confused by this, but also pleased. And you appear to be at war. Or maybe you're just shuffling armies around. I don't know. No, you're not at war. You're just shuffling armies around, I guess. For whatever reason. So we're doing quite well at the moment. Um... What about our diplomatic tech? When will we actually be able to do that? Okay, so we won't be able to do that for a while, so I'm going to go back to building ports and such. I believe we can get road networks in some places. Yes, we can. Um, I'm going to hold off on that for a moment. I'd rather get marketplaces across the coastal areas. I'm probably not going to do marketplaces all along this area. I'm just going to do coastal regions because that makes sense that the coastal regions would probably get priority. So I'm going to create a ring of marketplaces all along the coast and in other such places. Let's give you all wonderful, wonderful marketplaces. There we go. Done deal. And then we will continue up along the Crimea. Like so. I know this isn't all the Crimea, but it's the general area that I'm talking about. And we'll build you here, 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 and here. Uh, sure, why not? It's an inland sea, but why not? I believe that there's a few places that could benefit from it. Let's build all of those. I won't worry too much about these places. And that should be that. All right, let's see about road networks. Well, Constantinople is an absolute given. You as well, and you. London, most definitely, and we're out of power, but that's okay. Star forts, we should probably start building up our forts along the border. I believe we can actually get these. Oh no, we don't have the mission, we don't have the technology for them yet. Maybe that's the next level? Is that the next level? Yeah. So we'll get around to that eventually. I guess actually it makes kind of sense that, uh, Nathaniel's policy would avoid actually strengthening the fortifications along the border. Leipzig University, thank god, the class of 1551. You will sow a thousand flowers and take us back up to something approaching 
prestige because prestige is very, 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 very important. Yes, it needed that many berries. It's just that important. So I think... I think we might have pulled ahead enough. I think we may actually have pulled ahead enough that Russia will be able to westernize. They've got a king. I thought they were still Khans. Actually, no, there was a queen earlier, wasn't there? King Morocco won Shabanid. Interesting name. They only accept the Mongol culture. Though I wonder how the cultures actually look in their nation. Can we see? Well, we can, but it won't be in color for, for us. So there are some Russians, there are some Ruthenians, some Cuman. Yeah, they've got a nice little mix there. We've got a lot of a mix. Lots and lots of Norman, but also lots of Mongol and other such things. Which should be interesting when we get to actually have our accepted cultures include other things than Germans. Mongols should, if we don't convert on a large scale, be in the list of uh, minorities that are actually accepted. Gotland has entered into a military coalition against us. I don't know why they waited so long. A petition for redress. Peasants typically had no voice, but could occasionally gain access to the monarch and ask for redress. Redress. I suddenly turned it to Sean Connery there for a second. Sometimes these requests for redress would be directed at the local lord, who was perceived to have violated the peasants' rights. Stepping in to override a noble's local authority was a very drastic step. So we can lose some prestige? N not really. We can deny the petition. I mean, deny the petition because seven peasant regiments ain't worth shit. Go and crush the rabble. Those silly bastards, they do not have the right to stand against my divine influence. This is unfortunate. This is also unfortunate. Are you guys, like, not... Wow, they're not progressing at all. I need the Inquisitor stat. I need something. Really? I wonder if it would be enough if I boosted stability. We lost our Master Recruiter. That's unfortunate. Would that increase? Yes. Okay, those will all increase. Very slowly, but increase nonetheless. Alright, so let's see. We have to replace Tiberius. The only person who's actually got enough that I would want him is Simon here. So Simon, Fort Defense, make it so. Much better. Alright, Polotsk. Are we on good enough terms that you will accept a royal marriage? No. Still most definitely not. The outraged attitude towards us is kind of understandable. I guess. It's probably going to go away after aggressive expansion runs out. And I think we might actually... No, we don't have a royal marriage with them, do we? Of course not. Otherwise it would say, and it wouldn't be giving us an option here, it would say break royal ties. But I am a fool. So, let's have a quick look at our technology again. We're fairly ahead on almost everything. We're 17 years ahead on all of these. Do any of them require less than a thousand? No! <laughs> Not even close. Okay, so we might as well spend the points we've got. Uh, let's go ahead and build some more road networks. Make everybody happy and wealthy. There we go, and there we go. I said there we go, there we go. That's everything done. There we are. And apparently we can build one more. I don't see where. Oh, over here. There we go. Much better. And apparently still one more. Ah, here. Of course. We should build some shipyards as well. Seeing as our power is going to be mostly supported by the Navy when the time comes to actually expand across the globe. You know, aeroplanes not having been invented yet. So let's build up shipyards along all of these provinces. And... Oh good, Cardinal Minister, yes please. He has aided us well. Cardinal Minister all up in this. We should probably build up our forts along 
the, the, uh, the border with Poland. I think the fact that she has any military points whatsoever is enough of a roleplay reason for Anastasia to go and look at all the border provinces and go, oh god, how did Nathaniel let things get so drastically bad? <laughs> 